Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Retaliation, Motor City Wrestling's first pay-per-view of the season, and we are live in Boston, Massachusetts for this one. Got an absolute uh, barn burner of a show for you guys here tonight. We're going to start things off when Jessica Taylor takes on Mandy in our first match of the evening. What's up, Jordan? How you doing, man? Glad to see you can make it early. Uh... Coming up next, after this though, we've got the British Invasion taking on Silver and Gold for the UPW Tag Team Championships. Then after that, we've got Marco Rodriguez and Justin James settling their issues in a grudge match. No disqualifications for that one. That is going to tear the roof down, I think. Locally Lopez, Joe Sullivan, and Oxley for the European Championship in a triple threat as well. That's our mid-card match of the evening. Also, hey there, Brennan, and thanks, Yanny, for the host, bro. Thanks a lot for that. Uh... Of course, we've got Damian Deaver and Sean Goldman competing, competing in a hardcore match. After that, then Jordan Carr versus Cody Campbell inside a steel cage for the UPWA Championship. In our main event of the evening, as we all know, Melissa Rude, Brittany Foster uh, going one-on-one -on -one in a 30-minute Iron Woman for the United States Women's Championship. One of those two women are going to become your first ever UPWA US Champ. U.S. Women's Champ, <laughs> but uh, we're going to switch gears back to our first match of the night. We have uh, Jessica Taylor taking on Mandy, one on one. <clears throat> Got a chocolate shake, let's do this shot, 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 let's go bro. Jessica Taylor on her way down to the ring. Uh, now, Taylor was suspended a few weeks ago for interfering in Mandy's match against Melissa Rude, a part of the uh, U.S. Women's Championship Tournament, uh, would ultimately cost Mandy the win and uh, prevent Mandy from progressing in the tournament. If uh, Mandy had defeated Rude in that match, then it, it damn well could have been Mandy facing off against Foster tonight. And, yo, what's up? What's up, Brody? How you doing, bro? Also, we gotta get betting going, don't we? Fuck, hang on, time out. Now betting is going. Mandy making her way down to the ring. Like I said, these two have some issues to settle after Taylor interfered against Mandy a few weeks ago. Uh, Taylor very much cost Mandy an opportunity at the U.S. women's title. And uh, now that Taylor's suspension from that assault is over, Mandy finally gets to get her hands on Jesse T. So I believe I updated the rankings last night. Oh, fuck. There is actually one thing I might have forgotten to do. Hang on a second. <laughs> I might have forgotten to update. Yep, I forgot to do that, actually. I also forgot to do the rankings, I guess, last night. Uh, or two nights ago, whatever. But either way, uh, as Mandy steps into this matchup, she's currently ranked on Motor City Wrestling at number 21. Nine wins, eight losses uh, to her record. Jessie T, meanwhile, one of the newest superstars here in the UPWA. We're going to give her a pass on being so low, but she's currently ranked at number 28. Uh on MCW with one win, two losses, but tonight both these women looking to increase their records and also beat the shit out of each other. And here we go, wait, wait, hang on, what's up? Uh, will this be pro <clears throat> Will this Proving Ground tournament be the first to have two women's champions go against each other because Proving Ground has exited? No, no, you're you're getting that wrong. You're getting that completely wrong, Yanni. You're, you're thinking of Soul Survivor. Soul Survivor is where we pit the brands against each other. Proving Ground, the only uh, inter-brand go thing going on, is the Proving Ground tournament. Besides that, it's uh, besides that, it's still MCW Superstars facing MCW Superstars and XTW Superstars facing XTW Superstars. Oh, and Jessica Taylor just tossing Mandy across the ring with that Beal has her by the hair once again, and going to toss her once again. Picking Mandy back up and going to bring her over towards the ropes here. No, wait, Mandy. Elbows to the midsection 
and able to create some separation. Now, last time these two women squared off was uh, in the U.S. Women's Championship Tournament, the same one that Taylor cost uh, Mandy a win in. Uh, now, Mandy was able to defeat Taylor, which would bring Taylor to 0 and 2 in the tournament, effectively knocking her out. However, Taylor was not going to be settled there attacking Mandy uh, during her match with Rude. And, uh, well, that would, like I said, cost Mandy the match and cost her the opportunity that Rude faces here tonight in our main event. Mandy looking for some sort of DDT there, I believe, but uh, Taylor, a couple of Elvis punches to the gut, rather, able to reverse and hang on a second. And, oh, delivers a crush right across the chest, going for the cover now. To put Mandy away, but her right foot underneath the bottom rope, going to force the break. Uh, I thought they were doing a fusion dance or something. I mean, I don't, I don't really blame you. They are kind of similar in the fact that they're both uh, based off of a tournament, and they both now feature both uh, XTW and MCW Superstars. There's the kicks we got from Taylor, and a knife edge chop lighting up the chest of Mandy. I'm going to send her across the ring towards the opposite turnbuckle. What's she thinking here? Placing Mandy up on the top turnbuckle. There's a stiff right. And hang on, setting up now. Both these women on the top row. This is not a good position for either of them. What a superplex to the outside by Jessica Taylor. And now going to pick Mandy back up. How much does that take out of Taylor as well as Mandy? Normally, the superstar uh, on the receiving end of the move takes more damage, but you have to expect with uh, Taylor's increased body weight, that is going to uh, deliver a lot more damage to her than a, norm than a normal person. Taylor going to drag Mandy across the ring here. <clears throat> going for the cover now. Her feet on the ropes, referee doesn't see a thing, but this is going to give her a lot more leverage in this cover, but it's still only going to give her a two count. Punch to the gut. And a jawbreaker, nice counter. And spinning leg lariat takes the opponent down, setting up now though, perhaps. Taylor trying to shake off the damage, meanwhile Mandy, yes, is now setting up. Taylor back up to her feet here. And the kiss of death connects. And takes for the 115, bro. Going for the cover. Fuck Jesse T indeed, bro. <laughs> Mandy with the clothesline and follows up with the second one. And now a uh, single leg calf kick taking the opponent down. Going to pick her up to a seated position and a PK right to the back. Quick stops to the elbow as well. And Mandy taking the time to taunt her opponent here. Taylor back up to her feet and a kick to the gut, a second one at that. Setting up now, looking for a pump handle of some sort. A pump handle suplex connects, tossing the opponent across the ring once again. And looking for something there, but Mandy with the reversal of another kiss of death connects. Hooks the leg. Going for the cover. One, two, and three. Mandy picking up another win against Jessica Taylor here tonight. Uh, and just like that as well, Mandy uh, picking up her 10th win of the year by knocking off Taylor. So congratulations to her for that. Taylor, meanwhile, is now one win, three losses so far this year. But either way, it's time for us to move on to our next match of the night. We're going to take you through a couple more of these highlights. There's the first kiss of death. Thought that might have been it for Taylor, but uh, she still had some fight left in her, as you can see with this kick out here. And then that spelled the end for Taylor. Uh, Mandy, it looked like she reversed another crush of uh, Taylor's. Instead, would fire back with that forearm, followed up by the kiss of death. Taylor did not see it coming, and she did not uh, see anything after that match over. But now it's time to continue on with our night. That was our first match of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we still got six more to go. Up next, the British Invasion take on silver and gold in tag team action four. The UPWA Tag Team Championship. Stick around, because that match, like I said, is up next. We'll see you guys in just a second here.
And now it's time to continue on with our show here with this loading screen. <laughs> Uh, let me take a look real quick. I believe that's... No, I gotta get the Discord. That's the other thing I need to get real quick. Uh, Mandy, winning with the kiss of death. Uh, let's see real quick. What have I missed in the chat? Uh... Been loving 2K Battlegrounds recently, although uh, there aren't many as many creation options as I wanted. I can't make Marty in the game to, due to no long hair. Uh, been genuinely having fun with it, although it is somewhat easy to spam running levels. No, I do feel you. I uh, I've got Battlegrounds myself. It's a pretty good game. It's not bad for what it is. Uh, the story is actually pretty fun to play. I think it's pretty unique. But I'll be honest. I just like t I just like 2K19 more. Uh, like, they're two separate games, don't get me wrong, like, it's hard to compare them, but I just find more fun in 2K19, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Battlegrounds is fun for a few minutes, then it just gets kind of boring, in my opinion. Like, the daily challenges keep me coming back every once in a while, but that's, that's not enough for me. Uh, let's see. Uh, to fill the Marty shape, <laughs> uh, void in my heart, I made a Chucky Yang, the awesomest superstar in the universe. You know, I actually did make Sean Goldman on there. He's the only superstar that I made. Uh, I was thinking about making, like, Obliteration and a few others, but, like, with how long it takes to get your stats up in that game, I just didn't feel like it was worth it. Uh, which, that's not a bad thing either. I do kind of like that you have to work for your overall on there. But, yeah, I just... I don't know. It, it was just too much for me. <laughs> That being said, I did get Sean Goldman to like an 80-something at least, so I'll take that. Anyway, we've got the British Invasion taking on silver and gold in just a second. Don't go anywhere. It's up next. Also, betting something else I need to do. Let's go ahead and get that settled real quick. Almost got rid of that on accident. That would have sucked. There we go. Much better. <laughs> Gotta pay for more customization slots. That is also another point. But, uh... Yeah, it's, it's a good game. It definitely is. But it's just... I don't know. It, it, it doesn't fill the void that 2K20... Uh... Should have been able to fill. And then 2K21 should have been able to fill. Like, as somebody who's been waiting for a good wrestling game for two years, I was... I wanted something better, I'll be honest. <laughs> but it is good for what it is. It can't take much away from the game. The story as well is really fucking good. I, like, I really love the story. Uh, I, I beat it too quickly, though. I got done with that shit in like a day or two. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get betting started for this one. The British Invasion. It'll be Jay Haas and Riley Anderson representing in this matchup. Alex Rude going to be staying at ringside for this one. Uh, these three, uh, well, Haas and Anderson going to be taking on the longest reigning UPWA Tag Team Champions in history. Uh, kind of like how it isn't as creation-based, uh, because it, it's, it isn't supposed to be... I kind of like how it isn't as creation-based, because it isn't supposed to be realistic. It's supposed to be a cartoony thing where you work for what you want. Yeah, no, like, I totally respect that. Uh, and I'm perfectly fine with the whole working for what you want thing. But I'll be honest, another thing that really does annoy me, you mentioned creation, is the lack of creation suite. Like, it feels like I'm playing 2K15 again, uh, where I'm not able to do shit with making my guy. And it's also kind of annoying that if you if you uh, finalize your character, you can't, like, change his face or anything after. You, all you can do is change his clothes. I understand why that it's like that, but I'm not the biggest fan of that. <laughs> I'm betting on silver and gold because they never seem to lose uh, lose title matches. That and the fact that Grey has defeated all three members of the British Invasion over the past three weeks. Yeah, Tyler Van Diver, he lost to... Uh, I want to say it was Riley Anderson. Yeah, T Van Diver lost to Riley Anderson earlier this month. Cody Gray fired back with a win over Jay Haas, then won over Alex Rude inside a steel cage. Last week, Gray and Anderson, the two superstars who had not been defeated yet, went one on one inside the ring. Cody Gray submitted him with the Cody Clutch. Slowly betting on the British Invasion because I see more potential storyline developments. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I see such a good story happening 
if silver and gold retain the night. I can make such a good story out of as Texico and silver and gold. The foundation has already been laid. Uh, like this is long-term storytelling that we have that we might have here. But and of course, that's what it's all about. The UPW Tag Team Championships. Uh, the first ever tag titles in the UPWA. I guess I'm just going to talk over JoJo for a second. Might as well, I guess. On the way to the ring, at a combined weight of 452 pounds, King J. Haas and Riley Anderson. The British Invasion, the former longest reigning champs before Silver and Gold came along, 111 days uh, in two title defenses in their first reign as uh, as champions. And of course, silver and gold, two-time UPW Tag Team Champions, uh, a combined 112 days, uh, a combined 212 days as uh, as UPW Tag Team Champs. This is their fourth title defense under this reign, and they currently stand at 156 days, the longest UPW Championship reign in history. They are the 10th Tag Team Champions as well. Okay, uh, looks like my fucking Twitch crashed. <laughs> Looks like I'll have to reset that real quick. Give me one sec. Um, either way, Van Diver versus Haas to start this matchup off. The gold versus the gold. Couple of kicks there from Van Diver, and a flurry of offense here, just unloading with those kicks. Damn, amazingly, my fucking Twitch chat did not get reset. Hey, what's up, Kenny? How you doing, dude? Got our second match of the night, uh, the British Invasion taking on Silver and Golden off the off the ropes, looking for a rebound in Zagiri. Jay Hall is able to reverse, now getting his first bit of offense in this matchup, and he's got Van Diver up in the fireman's carry, delivering a bit of an airplane spin here, spinning around for quite a while. Trying to make Van Diver dizzy, and Haas is not done yet. Going the other way now, Riley Anderson is watching Van Diver go round and round and round again. You gotta wonder who's gonna be the most dizzy after this Van Diver, Haas, Anderson, or the audience at home. And Haas off the airplane spin makes the tag to Riley Anderson here. And oh, uh, immediately with the clothesline. Bored as hell, I feel that, dude. <laughs> Fuck, I would've been bored as hell if I didn't have to help my uh, buddy move today. <laughs> But either way, we got this matchup going on here. Van, uh, Van Diver boot to the face, takes Anderson down, flips him over, and now a standing head, uh, standing shooting star headbutt. And a second one. Van Diver at this point, is just, I think, is just showing off his athleticism. Anderson with the jawbreaker, nice reversal there, and a clothesline taking the opponent down, taking down one half of the Epitaph Tag Team Champions. And going behind with a snap German suplex, I think... I think Van Diver's head hit the bottom turnbuckle, maybe even the middle one as well on the way down. That is going to uh, cause severe whiplash for Van Diver, something he's going to have to deal with for the rest of this match. Fighting back, though, sends Anderson into the corner off that reversal. And now he's got Anderson up in the trio of woe. Keep throwing more shade at you until you had the Kiwi buzz cells. Uh, hey, look at that. You got, uh, <laughs> you got out of Texaco. Good job. Van Diver, he's got Anderson in the Tree of Woe from all the way across the ring, saying his prayer is going to go coast to coast against Riley Anderson. Let me go ahead and give you that real quick. That's your second Aztexico card out of the uh, Wrestling Palace series. Good job. Still need Wolf, Deuce, Rust, and Goldman. Van Diver now going to go for the cover here to put Anderson away. In this match, only a two counts nearly retain the uh, UPW Championships early. Sends Anderson into the corner, and a tag is finally made to Cody Gray for the first time in this matchup. There's the Irish whip, and off the rebound, drop toe hold, and an elbow drop right to the lower back as well. From Cody Gray trying to make the tag was Riley Anderson trying to slip away. Gray, nice defense there, preventing the tag from being made, but Anderson now back in control with that dragon screw right to the leg. Quick stomp as well, and a club to the upper back. 
has Gray by the hair and by the shoulder going to drag him. No, wait. Instead, the Snapmare taking him back down in a PK to the upper back. Anderson, uh, Cody Gray may be the freshman, but Anderson is not going to allow him to build any sort of offense except for that tandem offense we saw a moment ago. Huss trying to uh, stop Gray there, trying to catch him. Anderson fires right back, though, with a rolling Yoshi Tonic. Picks him up and setting him up now. He's got Gray up and slamming him into the mat. A Thunder Fire Driver going for the cover, stacking him up, but only a two count. Uh, I mean, I'll take the card, but I won't stop throwing shade at you. Quick stomp to the elbow. And Anderson setting up now, looking for a bullplex to the opponent. Let's not forget that uh, the British Invasion recently had... I think it was the Invasion. They uh, recently had a tag team title match against Silver and Gold. Uh, I'm going to look back at Wrestling Palace real quick. I believe that is a thing that happened. Maybe it was not. No, uh, that was that was actually the uh, Iron Cell match that happened at, at Wrestling Palace. Wait a second. Looking for the submission here. The Cody Clutch, the same way he submitted Anderson on Motor City Wrestling. He's going to retain the UPW Tag Team Championships the exact same way. Anderson submitting to the Cody Clutch, and this match is already over. Not gonna lie, that was a really quick match. I'm surprised Haas didn't do anything to break it up. <laughs> I was expecting that one to go on for at least another 5-10 minutes. Either way, though. British Invasion, a huge win here. Or, uh, no, the Silver and Gold, a huge win. That is Van Diver's 25th of the year. Meanwhile, Cody Gray uh, with his 25th of the year as well. Look at the tag team uh, division here. That is nine wins and three losses for silver and gold this year. The British Invasion now seven and twelve for the year. Well, just like that, the longest reigning UPW Tag Team Champions in history are going to retain and continue their reign. That is now five, uh, no, four total title defenses, and uh, they will be holding those championships into Proving Ground, where they will face Aztexico for the titles. But uh, until then, we still got... Five more matches to get through tonight. Marco Rodriguez and Justin James. That is your next match of the night. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment uh, for you. Stick around. That match is next, like I just said. Be back in a sec. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, give me one quick second here. Let me figure something out real quick. All right, cool. Uh, let me take a look at the chat real quick. Let me see what I missed here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they never lose title matches, apparently, except for the one time that they did lose them to... Uh, I. Who did they lose the titles to when they held them? I feel like it might have been... I think it was actually Goldman and uh, James that dethroned Silver and Gold the first time. No, 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 no. It, it actually was the British Invasion who defeated Silver and Gold last time. Uh, that's what happened. And then James and Goldman uh, went on to defeat the British Invasion about four months later. Alright, enough talking. Let's get this match going. Marco Rodriguez and Justin James. This match has been building up for the past two months, and we're finally going to see it all uh, be unleashed in this ring here tonight. No disqualifications in this match.
Making his way to the ring from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, weighing in at 184 pounds, Marco Rodriguez. Now this whole rivalry rivalry started uh, back on MCW number 97, uh, 98 rather. Trying to uh, trying to find the exact start back when Dustin James and Marco Rodriguez had their first match together in this rivalry. Um, James was able to defeat Rodriguez, but Marco did uh, that did not sit well with him at all. Rodriguez attacked Dustin after the match. Uh, but it wouldn't stop there. The following week, Dustin James was scheduled to face off against Johnny Nightblade. In that match, Marco Rodriguez, before uh, it could even take place, Rodriguez attacked uh, James backstage and went on to defeat Nightblade in his place. Later, it was re later on that night, it was revealed that Rodriguez was behind the attack, and that's when Justin James went full force against him. Oh, you got Melissa Rude. Good job. Out of the MCW series. Uh, as I was saying here, Justin James and Dustin James, or not, Justin James has been fighting Marco Rodriguez over the past uh, couple of months on the behalf of Dustin trying to avenge his fallen brother. Uh, that would all come to an end, however, when Rodriguez gave him a concussion after delivering a concerto uh, two weeks ago on MCW. This led to Dustin James facing off against Marco Rodriguez. Just, Dustin James came back and attacked, or faced off against Rodriguez, rather, this past week on MCW, where uh, James was unsuccessful. And now we finally have Marco Rodriguez. He's about to f uh, finally finish off business with Justin in this no disqualifications match. It's uh, all about to be unleashed in this one. Uh, I'm betting on Justin James because Marco Rodriguez is the reason why I had to change one of my one of the interest animations for one of the Kiwi buzzsaws. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Marco Rodriguez and Justin James. This it's gonna be very interesting to see how this one goes. And this match is finally off. Justin immediately in with a Superman punch, taking the opponent down, kicks to the gut as well. Justin is, has got a lot of fury, I'm sure, behind that Superman punch. And now going to deliver a reverse slingshot, sending uh, Rodriguez back into the center of the ring. Picks him back up. Knife edge chop a second one as well. And sends him into the corner now. Rodriguez got him out some sort of offense here, able to avoid that dropkick attempt, but James still in control. Now to the opposite side of the ring. Stinger splash connects. And Rodriguez again back up, but James not allowing him to build any offense. This is great by Justin. Going after the leg there, there's a quick stomp to the hamstring. And a PK as well. Rodriguez back up, there's a quick club though. And now into the corner once again. Another stinger splash, taking Rodriguez back down to the mat. And now what's he setting up for here? Oh, a punt kick right to the side of the head. And dropping the knee across the face as well. This is more of a squash match than anything uh, so far. Justin going to the top rope here. Maybe about to put Marco Rodriguez away. Looking for the leg drop off the top rope. Picking Rodriguez back up now. And into the corner, perhaps with another stinger splash. Turns him around here. And he's got Rodriguez up on his shoulders looking for Justin the wind. Or the Justin Valley Driver, rather. And Justin James, full control of this match. I don't even know if Marco has hit him one time so far. Justin to the top rope here. Rodriguez back up to his feet. Misses the missile drop kick. And now a kick right to the le right to the side. I think that was Marco's first bit of offense in this entire match. Setting up here, James, though, with the reversal. Inverted DDT takes the opponent down. And Rodriguez creating some separation here off the apron. I ever just really want to watch the, the Tom and Jerry version of the Wizard of, Wizard of Oz. Didn't know there was one, I'll be honest with you. Rodriguez back in the ring. Wait, into the corner goes James. 
Uh, I have the DVD. My TV can play DVDs. I'll be right back. <laughs> Rodriguez setting up for something there, but James with the reversal into an atomic drop. You hate to see it for Marco Rodriguez. And now, wait a second. Oh, a, a uh, flapjack. There's a modified flapjack delivered by Justin James. Puts Rodriguez in perfect position. James to the top rope. Setting up now, looking for... <laughs> The elbow drop. Randy Savage elbow drop right to the back. Picks him up once again and into the corner goes Rodriguez. James setting up now. Sends Rodriguez to the outside. And wait a second. Dustin James through the turnbuckle. Tornado DDT taking Rodriguez down. Looking for a right. Rodriguez responds with a left. Misses the spinning back fist. There's the right. Oh, wait. Rodriguez, though, sends him back inside. There's a quick club and another one at that. And a kick to the gut. Gets caught. Spinning heel kick takes him down. Taking him back up. There's the reversal. A nice uppercut there from Rodriguez. Spinning back fist gets caught. And James. What a backbreaker taking Rodriguez down. And James now setting up here. Looking to put away Marco Rodriguez, a kick to the gut. He's got him up, and the Justin Buster connects. Going for the pin, shoulders down. One, two, three. Justin James, in uh, relatively squashy fashion, puts away Marco Rodriguez. What the fuck is going on with these matches, dude? Ending way too quickly. Rodriguez uh, put up a fight towards the end there, but Justin James, I think the damage was already just just done against Rodriguez. James able to capitalize, deliver the Justin Valley driver, and pick up the 1 2 3 in this match. Here is your winner, Justin James. And just like that, Justin James picking up the win. That is his eighth win of the year and his second pay per view win of his entire career. Congratulations there. For Justin James, indeed. But now it's time for our next match of the night. Coming up next, uh, let's see what we got here. Mid-card match of the evening. Locally Lopez, Joe Sullivan, and Oxley compete in a uh, triple threat match for the European Championship. Uh, don't go anywhere. That match is up next. Stick around. And congratulations to all three of our winners for that one. I'm going to go ahead and get betting ready for this one. Oh, I got to get, get Discord updated as well, don't I? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, Betty. All right, Lopez, Lopez, Joe Sullivan, and Oxley. There we go. All right, I'll go ahead and get the betting ready now. Locally Lopez, Joe Sullivan, and Oxley. This is Oxley's third uh, reign with the European Championship. The first ever three-time European champ. He holds that title with a lot of pride. Today is his 30th day on this reign. Meanwhile, Joe Sullivan looking to capture his first championship in the UPWA. Locally Lopez looking to uh, capture his first European Championship and become... The first Triple Crown winner in the entire UPWA. First two matches took 25 minutes overall. The one, uh, This one took 10. The next one takes 15. We can expect a pattern of 25 to emerge. I don't think this one's going to take 15 minutes. Uh, let's see here. So far, uh... Introducing the challenger. 
Let's see. So uh, so after four matches will have gone 50 minutes. Six matches will have been uh, will have made 75 minutes go by, and the 30 minute Iron Woman match will force the show to go to 105. So an hour 45 minutes. Uh, we'll see. Joe Sullivan. Now, normally, I would count Joe Sullivan out immediately. I hate to say it, but he has a horrible record. Uh, it is really hard to get behind this guy. However, Joe Sullivan has proven recently that he may be on a, on a push here. He may be getting his push finally. Uh, Sullivan has acquired two massive wins, which make up half of his wins for the year, by the way. Back-to-back uh, -back wins over Locally Lopez and Oxley, his two opponents in this match. And on top of that, Sullivan also has the advantage of this being a triple threat match. He could, in theory, just sit back, let his opponents do the work for him, and then just come in later to reap the benefits. There are a lot of factors going into this match that make it very likely that Joe Sullivan could win his first European Championship, his first championship in general, in the UPWA here tonight. Uh, even if uh, Sex Kills Dragon Ball is working, Lopez is 60% not going to be involved in the decision. And then, of course, here comes our European Champion. A very proud man. The champion from Brisbane, Australia, weighing in at 271 pounds. He is the European champion, the bruiser Oxley. Oxley making his way down to the ring. Like I said, this is his 30th day as European champion for the first time. If we take a look at all his other reigns combined, uh, Oxley is currently a, uh, well, he's currently held the European Championship for a total of uh, 186 days across his three reigns. This will be his uh, seventh ever title defense with the championship. And his first during this reign, and you have to ask the question, if Oxley loses here tonight, if he loses the European Championship again, what happens? Where does Oxley go? Will he continue to reach for the European Championship, be, try to become a four-time champ, or will he move on, go for the EPW Championship, go for the World Hardcore title, or maybe even forge a tag team with somebody? And of course, that is what it is all about. Some call it the most prestigious title in the UPWA. The European Championship, a lot of the greats have held that title. Cody Gray... Uh, Adrian Rose, Zach Stasiak, just to name a few. Local Lopez has never held the title. Oxley, that title made his career. Joe Sullivan has the opportunity to, uh, to do the same here tonight. Oxley taking down Lopez earlier than a right from Sullivan, picks him up now. And Oxley, a couple of elbows to the side of the head, able to break free from Sullivan's grip. There's a single leg takedown, rolls over. And wait a second, Lopez doesn't see, going for the cover, lateral press. And Lopez breaking things up. Sullivan able to kick out as well. Open palm strike from Oxley. There's the reversal of a couple of kicks to the leg. And a bell clap as well. No way, Oxley. There's the reversal. Nice uh, elbow to the midsection, or to the knee rather. But Lopez fires back. Oh, takes him down with that monkey flip. And wait, Sullivan. Oh, Sullivan taking out with that clothesline. Never realized Oxley was Seamus, Seamus White. You really never noticed that? Wait, oh, looking for a knee drop, did not get any of it. And now Oxley to the outside going after uh, Lopez. No, wait, maybe not, going back inside to face Sullivan, perhaps. Oh, and there's a right, a club and a second one, and a third taking the champion down. Oxley trying to crawl over to the ropes, create a bit of separation, perhaps, but able to reverse with a drop to a hold, taking the much bigger Sullivan down. Oh, Hurricanrana taking the opponent down. And now... Oh, a flurry of strikes. Sullivan knocks back with that open palm strike. And a bell clap rocks him as well. But Sullivan, there's the arm drag. A kick to the gut. 
looks extra shameless what to do. Might be the arena, honestly. No, actually, no, it's because he's it's, he's not wearing his, uh, his tank top. Oxley is not wearing a shirt, so therefore you see more of his pasty white skin. <laughs> Did he actually get dipped in a vat of Marty's white hair dye? Uh, Lopez with that club to the upper back. Oh, looking for something there. Maybe a knee strike. Oxley able to sidestep and delivers the scoop slam, taking Lopez down. Now going to drag him over towards the middle of the ring. Hook of the outside leg to put Lopez away in this match. One, two, no, not even able to kick out. PK from Sullivan, looking for a big boot, gets caught. Single leg takedown, Sullivan now. Looking for a single leg, Boston Crab. Trying to force the submission out of the European champion. It is going to be a cold day in hell when Oxley submits that title. Wait a second, Oxley's got Lopez. Spinning power slam takes the opponent down. And Sullivan breaks up the pin. That is the difficulty in a triple threat match. You always got to look out for that X Factor, that third man. Sullivan again looking for the Boston Crab, the half the half crab. You know, never have I uh, wanted someone to put their shirt on uh, more than I th uh, more than that one time involving Marty's grandma. Oh my fucking god! Uh, Oxley dragging Lopez back towards the middle of the ring, lateral press, trying to put him away off that spinning power slam. Only a two count though. A uh, lot of time has passed since Oxley initially hit that move. Lopez able to recover, but now he's got him locked in the camel clutch. Sullivan trying to get over there and break things up. And we're seeing a uh, Kio Del Rio situation there. Lopez though able to free himself from the Cody clutch. Yeah, Sullivan I think is six foot six. <clears throat> Definitely a taller athlete, and he's got a build to make up for it as well. And wait a second. Oh, STO leg sweep combo by Oxley and Sullivan looking for a takedown. Sullivan with a knee strike right to the face of Oxley takes him out of the equation. Going to bring Oxley into the corner, though. Like Dominic Dijakovic. Yeah, that's actually a really good way to put it. Yeah, he is kind of like Dominic Dijakovic, except, uh... Well, he's like the modern Dominic Dijakovic, a.k.a. Slapjack or whatever the fuck. Whichever one he is. I was going to say, except for the fact that Dijakovic actually gets wins, but that's not so much the case anymore. Only a two count on Lopez. He's going to have to do something. Uh, he's going to have to put Lopez away immediately after a big move if he wants to score the win and retain the championship in this match. Both of them even do Spanish flies. Does Dijakovic actually do a Spanish fly? Yeah, he fucking did one to Keith Lee, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that was so long ago now. Sullivan and Lopez alone in the ring. Sullivan looking for the uh, the Southern Lights driver weight. Able to escape is Lopez. And now a couple of strikes. Uh, there is a form as well. And a Hurricanrana taking down. Stacking up. Looking for the cover. Oxley does not have to be pinned for him to lose the title. Lopez trying to capitalize on that right now by eliminating Sullivan in this match. La Profecia. Azteca. It took everything out of Lopez to deliver the move though. He's got to get into, the, into position for the cover though. And Oxley is back up from behind, double axe handle, Lopez falls into the cover, but that's not going to be enough, going for the cover now is Oxley, to put away, Lopez in this match, only a two, if Oxley was smart, he would have gone for the pin on Joe Sullivan, I think that might have been it for Sullivan, And if, if Lopez could have gone for the cover fast enough, I think he would have just won this match. You, you hate to see fatigue take over like that. That may have just cost Lopez the opportunity to win this match and become the first ever Triple Crown winner. Over the top rope and down to the floor goes Lopez. If this was a Royal Rumble or a Battle Royal, Sullivan would have just eliminated Lopez, but that is not the case. Sullivan's got to keep his eye on the ball, focus on Oxley, the only other man in the ring. Looking for a flatliner takes him down. When Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic were in uh, NXT, <laughs> that was the only time uh, Keith Lee could make a friend he could keep, unlike Drew. Wait a second. Camel Clutch trying to submit Oxley once again. And now Oxley, double leg sweep, able to escape. You know, I I personally think that Dijakovic made Keith... Like, Keith Lee was already a star, don't get me wrong, but he made WWE realize that they had a fucking star. He made NXT realize that Keith Lee was really something. Because before Dij Dijakovic came along, before they had that amazing rivalry, Keith Lee was jobbing out to people. <laughs> 
So I'm happy that Dijakovic finally came along. Iron sharpens iron, and that's exactly what happened. It's a shame that Dijakovic couldn't get a title run out of it, though, and instead became T-Bar. Then Karrion Cross choked Di Di uh, Dominic Dijakovic out, and Keith Lee got taken out by a Doomsday Sayuda suplex. Dude, he fucking made Dijakovic pass out so hard, he gave him so much brain damage, he forgot who he was and thought he was part of a damn militia to take down the WWE. All three men standing in the ring. Sullivan trying to change that as he sends Lopez across the ring. And wait a second. To the top rope goes Lopez. There's a right. And now setting Lopez up here. Both men on the top rope and a superplex to the outside. Yeah, I don't agree to it at all. I think... I don't think that Cross should have been thrown into the, uh, in the main event scene. That's my issue. If they, if they want to give him the NXT title, that's fine. But he shouldn't have won it like that. He, they should have given Lee an actual title run. Honestly, I think that just completely devalued both the NXT and North American titles. When he lost the NXT championship like that. Uh, Sullivan, there's a stomp to the arm. And now setting up again, he wants this camel clutch. He wants to submit the European champion. I don't know if, it, if he is if this is strictly to get the win, or if it is if it's a power move by Sullivan. But he's he's got to find something that's going to work to defeat either Lopez or Oxley. Now Lopez or uh, uh, Lopez takes out Sullivan in this match. Wait a second, Lopez taking a page. Taking a page out of Sullivan's playbook, he's got a Fujiwara armbar locked in, trying to submit Oxley. Taking a less powerful approach, going for a technical stand standpoint on the submission, and Oxley able to escape, though. Kicks to the gut, and Lopez sending him into the corner. And Oxley with the reversal, there's a right. There's the uppercut as well, and now a, a roundhouse kick, and a kick to the leg. And Oxley... Into the corner. Lopez setting up now for the first time in this matchup. It's been a while uh, that this match has been going on, but he's hitting it for the first time. Now Templo has Tekken connects against Oxley. Sullivan going to try to reap the benefits, perhaps. They're now focusing on Lopez instead. Oh, what a face buster. Sullivan is bleeding hard. He's wearing the proverbial crimson mask at this point. And wait a second. Going for the pin off of Templo Azteca. Will that do it for Oxley? Only a two count. Sullivan almost became European champion there off of uh, off of Lopez's hard work. But Oxley, no wait, kicks to the gut. And hold on, looking for a flatliner. Sullivan gets countered. Oxley able to reverse into an arm drag. And now he's got Sullivan into the corner. And and wait a second, wait a second. Completely legal. In a triple threat match. Shattered dreams. To Joe Sullivan. That has got to hurt. And I, I think every man in our audience has got to feel for Joe Sullivan after that one. That might have been it if Lopez was not, not able to break up the pin right there. But now Lopez, he's got Oxley in the corner. Instead going to focus on Sullivan though. Interesting play. Sends Sullivan into the opposite corner. And wait, once again setting up. And Templo Azteca for a second time. Meanwhile, he's still got Oxley to deal with. There's the crucifix going for the cover. Rolling him up here. One, two, only a two. Oxley able to kick out. There's an elbow to the gut though. Looking for a big boot. No single leg takedown. Into an Achilles lock. Will Oxley submit? We've seen so many submissions so far in this match, but no, not a single person is willing to give up. Going for the cover off that big boot, and only a one. Lopez taken out of the equation. Clothesline takes Oxley down. Karrion Cross is, uh, is to Sayota suplexes, as Lesnar is to German suplexes. You want to see him, but not as uh, not as a match ender. Speaking of match enders, Southern Lights driver, Joe Sullivan about to become the European champion. One, two... Only a two he kicks out somehow. And that may he's going for it again, the mad lad. The the absolute mad lad. He wants to submit Oxley with the camel clutch. Is he going to do it? 
Lopez getting up on the outside. High tension here, high stakes in this match. Oxley able to escape. Now picks him back up. Off the rebound. And a flapjack taking Sullivan out. Meanwhile, Lopez from behind. Back into the action. Sends him into the corner again. And for the third time this match. Lopez looking for that overhead stunner. Templo Azteca for the third time. And now the cover. I think that's it. I think uh, Lopez is about to win it here. One, two, and only a two still. Lopez one second away from becoming a triple crown winner in the UPWA. Flips him back over. Wait a sec. He's done playing games. Lopez turning around. Looking for La Ciudad de Oro. But Oxley able to escape. Able to roll away from the impact. And escape the match ender. But now Sullivan's back in the equation. And Sullivan has Oxley on his shoulders. Stun gun. And now Oxley fighting back. Going for the cover. One. Two. And only a two. Lopez back up. All three men standing. One of these men will be your European champion soon. But Oxley with that drop toehold. Sullivan draped across that middle rope. And Oxley to the outside. Oh, what a punch to the face back inside. Oh, a punch right to the midsection. Lopez fights back. Oh, and an Enzigiri, the champ is down and out. Lopez focusing attention on Sullivan. Front face lock. <laughs> yeah, fight forever. Fujiwara armbar. No, Sullivan. Able to reverse. Back up to his feet. But Lopez still in control. They may damn well fight forever if this keeps up here. This is a three-way stalemate these superstars have fought each other to. Not a single side is willing to give, but Lopez and Sullivan still going at it hard inside the ring. There's the dragon screw to take Sullivan down. And now, Indian Deathlock, again, trying a submission. Oh, and what a right from Sullivan, able to break things up. And hold on. Oh, looking for a powerbomb, I think. Oxley takes care of that. But at the same time, he just inadvertently helped locally Lopez, but a scoop slam taking him down. Stomp to the gut. Has him by the arm. A couple more stomps right to the back. <laughs> Boots to the face. Oxley hasn't been able to hit any finishers in the end game, and it's been worrying me. <laughs> yeah, I think there's only been one finisher, two finishers hit in this entire match. That was a single uh, Prophecy Azteca from Lopez, and... A Southern Lights driver from Sullivan. Make that three. Oxley with the spinning scoop slam. It is over. One, two, three. Oxley retains the European Championship. What a match we just saw. That was an absolute, an absolute three-way. It could have gone any of the three ways. All three men put on a, a spectacular performance in this match. And none of them should have anything to be ashamed of. That was a barn burner. <laughs> that is for sure. There were a couple of mistakes made by the competitors in the match. You saw there Lopez hesitated on the on the pin for the... Uh, after the Lope, uh, Profecia Azteca. Oxley didn't go for the pin off of it. This matchup, I feel like he could have ended so many times before we actually reached our finish, but that just goes to show the amount of pressure all three superstars were under in this match. The inability to think straight, uh, to uh, think rationally. But it looks like, at the end of the day, that benefited Oxley the most because he is the one standing here, still your European champion. We've seen two title defenses so far tonight. We're going to see... Uh, we're going to see the UPW Championship in action later on, as well as the United States Women's Championship. But for now, we've still got Sean Goldman and D Damian Deaver in a hardcore match. Uh, and I think I might have fucked something up on that. Ah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's enough, enough talk. Let's get this one finally underway. Perfect timing with that dark screen. Let's get this going. We'll be back after the commercial break.
All right. That was a great match. I don't know if that. I don't think that's match of the year, but that was still definitely match of the night, if nothing else. Oxley now 22 and 15 for the year, seven and seven at pay per views after that one. Meanwhile, Joe Sullivan that is going to make him four and 19. You hate to see it, indeed. <clears throat> uh, let me go ahead and find exactly what I'm missing here. Oxley pins Sullivan with a spinning power slam. And also retains the European Championship in the process. What a what a match though. That was actually a fucking fantastic match. <laughs> like that was the ideal triple threat. All three superstars preventing each other from winning. Uh and just not being willing to give in. Plus, that was it was really cool to see all the submissions uh, come in, come into play as well. All right, that's enough talking though. Let's get this one started. Retaliation is certainly on the mind of Sean Goldman as we get this one underway here in just a moment. Yeah, I'll, I gotta give that one to you though, uh, Yanni. You predicted that Lopez would not be involved in the decision, and he wasn't. There we go. Uh, you guys have been paid out. Congratulations once again. Damian Deaver, meanwhile, on his way down to the ring. Let me go ahead and uh, <clears throat> get betting started for, for this one. Damian Deaver, for the past two months, he has been doing everything in his power to avoid fighting Sean Goldman head-on. He's had to face him in tag team matches, sure, but Deaver and Goldman have not gone one-on-one -on -one since the uh, since that European Championship qualifier match back on MCW number 97. After Deaver lost that match to Goldman, he attacked Goldman the following week in his matchup against Oxley. And since then, uh, Oxley, well, since then, Deaver and Goldman, well, Goldman has been chasing after Deaver hard, trying to find him, trying to get him in one place so he can beat the ever-living shit out of him for what he's done. Uh, which, to be fair, I, I, if memory serves me correctly, uh, Goldman is did kind of get what he deserved when he attacked Deaver after their initial match, despite already having gotten the win. Uh... But that is that has not stopped Goldman. That has not stopped Goldman from wanting to get his hands on Deaver. And tonight, that finally happens. Hardcore match. Deaver was told if he got out of this match in any way, uh, he would be fired. And his opponent from San Francisco, California, weighing in at 276 pounds, Sean Goldman. That means that Deaver could not uh, could not back out of this match. He could not have Justin James fill in for him, and he cannot leave this match before it is over, or else he will be fired. And you gotta expect the nerves are going for J uh, for Deaver as uh, Goldman makes his way down to the ring. Goldman's been waiting for this moment for a long time. And tonight, he finally gets his opportunity. And here we go, time to get this matchup started. Damian Deaver and Sean Goldman, one-on-one -on -one hardcore rules. There will be no disqualifications and falls will count anywhere in this matchup. 
Goldman with that clothesline taking Deaver down to begin this match. But now a knuckle sandwich applied. Uh, you know what is uh, what is it with recently with the PWA guys that actually that usually wrestle with their tops on take their shirts off in matches recently? I swear to God, ever since I saw Liam West, the PWA's been making me question my sexuality. Uh, well, Oxley and Sean Goldman tonight. The reason they're fighting with their shirts off is because these are their pay per view pay per view attires. Meanwhile, Deaver, I don't even think, fights with a shirt at all, but this is also his pay-per-view attire. Deaver with that spinning soul kick right to the face of Sean Goldman pushes back, though. Nice reversal and an elbow drop right to the chest. Oh, trying to pick Deaver back up, perhaps, but Deaver fires back with that elbow to the face and a single leg drop kick as well to follow up. And wait a second, setting up here, looking for a Russian leg sweep right back up to his feet, though. Incredible athleticism from the Diamond. Raking at the eyes, Goldman not going to tolerate that. A couple of brutal shots to the ribs. And now off the ropes. Knee strike right to the midsection and follows up with a second one. And now finishing things off with a Russian leg sweep. Oh, uh, yeah. You have to get something to entice you to buy it. What better than, man what better than Manpex, honestly? Uh, <laughs> oh, what a gut buster by Sean Goldman. Goldman seemingly targeting the abdomen in this match. Oh, what a knee strike, though. Deaver playing possum there against Sean Goldman. Right back up to his feet, but Goldman back up as well. There's a quick club, and Goldman going to make him pay for that one. Sends him towards the ropes, and off the rebound, pulls him back in. No, wait, no, now he's got him on his shoulders, or above his shoulders, rather, with that military press gut buster looking for a PK. Deaver able to avoid it, but not able to, vo to, do to avoid that stop to the inside of the knee. Pop-up powerbomb taking him down. And now setting up here. He's got Deaver up on his shoulders. Been wanting to do this for weeks. Delivers the F5 to Damian Deaver. Now going for the cover. Hook of the outside leg. One, two, and three. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Uh, not exactly the match I expected to follow that triple threat, but fuck it. Sean Goldman got his win. And personally, I thought he would have enjoyed it more. In, uh, would have, uh... Decided to take it in. Finally gets his opportunity to beat the fuck out of Damian Deaver. And we get a, like, three-minute match out of it. Either way, though. Here is your winner, Sean Goldman. Sean Goldman not getting cocky, it seems. Going to take his win and leave. That is all he wanted was just to put down Deaver in this match. And he got just that. Congratulations to you guys on picking the right guy, but now we got our UPW Championship match coming up next. Yanni, you're on track to be right about the uh, about the time limit for this night as well. Uh, we'll get that ma next match going in just a second. For now, commercial break. We'll be back in a sec. All right, let me take a look here. Jordan Carr and Cody Campbell finally going to go one-on-one. -on -one. So far, we've seen two title retentions here tonight. We saw the UPW Tag Team Championships get retained by Silver and Gold. And, of course, uh, Oxley retaining the European Championship in that triple threat match just a few moments ago. But now we're going to see our third championship match of the night, the UPW Championship, about to be decided between Jordan Carr and Cody Campbell in a steel cage match. I'd like to remind you all, until the end of the show, use code RETALIATION at UPWMerchShop.com uh, uh, to get 25% off any MCW Superstars merchandise. But uh, it's, not the, it's not the brand Marty's on, so why would you use it? Fair point. <laughs> anime protagonist versus anime protagonist gone bad. Wait, what the fuck was Cody Campbell an anime protagonist? Unless you mean the whole story of him... Uh, Getting his first championship match, singles championship match in over a year. The following contest is a steel cage match. And it's for the Pro Wrestling Alliance Championship. Betting will begin now. Carr versus Campbell one on one.
Now we saw earlier tonight, Locally Lopez had the huge opportunity to become the first ever Triple Crown winner in the UPWA. Uh, Jordan Carr now faces that same exact opportunity. Jordan Carr, uh, back in 2018, I want to say, uh, I'm trying to find it real quick, uh, exactly when they held the titles. No, this was back in the middle of 2019. Jordan Carr uh, held the, the UPW Tag Team Championships for 28 days alongside the Fallen Angels. Or the Lost Souls, rather. Uh, since then, Jordan Carr has also become a European champion, held that prestigious title for 85 days, the fourth longest reigning champ in history tonight, though. He has the chance to uh, win the UPWA Championship, the world title the best prize in the entire United United Pro Wrestling Alliance. It's no Wrestling Palace, but this could, this could be Jordan Carr's retaliation moment. And this has been a very heated rivalry between the Campbell Club, the Bakers, and Jordan Carr over the past few weeks. Ever since Carr was named number one contender for the EPW Championship, and ever since the Bakers on XTW were named number one contenders for the Campbell Club's world tag titles, uh, the Bakers and Carr have, fo have forged some sort of unusual alliance. You know, they say the enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's exactly what those uh, three superstars figured when they went to war with the Campbell Club. And my God, did they go to war on XTW this past week. An absolutely insane uh, six ma elimination six-man tag match. But tonight is one-on-one. -on -one. Jordan Carr, Cody Campbell, Steel Cage to make sure that the Campbell Club and the Bakers cannot interfere in this match. <laughs> If Carr wins, it's gonna be Doug's Christmas present, present to us all. <laughs> from Newark, New Jersey, weighing in at 268 pounds, Jordan Carr. Jordan Carr, as he steps into this matchup, uh, currently has. Uh, if I can find it real quick, come on, come on, come on, come on. Introducing the champion. 16 to 17. From Ann Arbor, Michigan, weighing in at 192 pounds. He is the Pro Wrestling Alliance Champion, Cody Campbell. Jordan Carr, 16 wins, 17 losses this year, 0 and 4. Wait, what is that? Uh, never mind that, actually. Uh, 5 and 7 for pay per views in his entire career. Career wins and losses, 31 and 34. Cody Campbell, meanwhile, 20 and 12 this year, 40 and 42 overall. 6 wins and 6 losses at pay per views. This will be Cody Campbell's first title defense as the UPWA champion. And of course, it will be contested inside the steel cage, currently lowering around the superstars. And now it is time to get this match started. Carr just pushing him back into the corner to start things off. And a splash taking Campbell down. There's the face buster from Carr, and a PK as well. Carr trying to get an early lead against Cody Campbell, a very smart strategy. Try to get on the offensive early against Campbell. But at the same time, don't wear yourself out too much. Uh, this is going to be a very taxing match, especially inside the steel cage where there's nowhere to go. Carr forcing, uh, forcing Campbell back, but Campbell back in control sends him into the corner. We all know Carr is a, uh, well, he's an incredible athlete. 2020 was definitely his year when he not only qualified for proving ground for the Proving Ground tournament and made it, then he made it to the finals of that tournament. He didn't score a single fall in the 60-minute Iron Cell match uh, against those three other participants. However, he definitely made a name for himself by not quitting and continuing to fight in that match for 60 entire minutes. Since then, Jordan Carr, he's won the European Championship, no doubt partially thanks to that incredible performance, showing exactly how resilient he is. Cody Campbell, though, no stranger to resiliency himself. Uh, Campbell, one of the most per uh, perseverant superstars in the entire UPWA. We've seen him go the distance against the likes of Adrian Rose, Cody Campbell, or uh, Cody Gray, rather, 
Uh, and Zach Stasiak in the past. Oh, what a clothesline there. Some might argue that Cody Campbell's kind of fallen out of touch, though. More of a uh, of a tag team wrestler. Evers. Oh, what a Campbell kick, though, from out of nowhere. Just like that, Cody Campbell can turn things around in a match, and he just did that right there. Carr able to get the right shoulder up and stay alive. As I was saying, some might argue that Cody Campbell has uh, has reverted back to being more of a, a tag team competitor alongside Drew Campbell. Co Cody Campbell... Are you serious? What the fuck is this pay-per-view? Well, he wins. Alright, whatever. <laughs> All right, I'm, I just want to make it clear. I'm not upset that Cody Campbell won. I'm upset that he won that fucking quickly. Jordan Carr, you are asking. Asking to fucking be buried again, dude. <laughs> Get this golden fucking ticket. Get this golden ticket, and you waste it. You hate to see it, indeed. That makes me sad. Here is your winner, and still, Pro Wrestling Alliance Champion, Cody Campbell. Uh, let's see, hang on, what, what I miss here? Uh, I have a feeling the way that uh, the, pro <laughs> the Proving Ground Tournament was pitched, uh, something like this. So you like Fatal 4 Ways. Uh, well, I hope you like Fatal 5 Ways, actually. <laughs> Yeah, that actually makes me really fucking upset. I don't like this pay-per-view. I'm upset with the way that it's gone. I ho the triple threat match was great. I hope that this Iron Woman match does not... I hope it's even. I hope it's even. I hope it's a real fight and it doesn't just turn into a 30-minute squash. Uh, whatever. Whatever. We're moving on. We're moving on from that. We'll be back after commercial. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> Alright then, let's get this shit going. <laughs> Fucking traumatized by the steel cage. Uh, Alright, let's get... Let me go ahead and figure this out real quick. Cody Campbell... Let's see. Wins with the fucking cross... Or cross arm bar. <laughs> like someone <laughs> cut Jordan Carr's brakes. That is a great way to put it for sure. Uh, Alright. Now in this match, both individuals were given the opportunity to, uh, to pick two superstars to be in their corner for this match. Uh, Melissa Rude, she's got Jessica Taylor and Selena Dominguez representing her at ringside. Meanwhile, Brittany Foster, of course, uh, her best friend Cassidy, the UPWH Women's Champion, will be uh, alongside her as well as longtime rival, uh, who she's, er who they've definitely earned the respect of each other, Cindy Van Diver, going to be alongside Brittany Foster in this one as well. Did I get the other thing updated? The uh, wins? Yes, I did. All right, cool. All right, gotta get betting, don't I? All right, Cody Campbell, whoever the fuck bet on him, congratulations, good job, Ben. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> All right, whatever. Melissa Rude, Brittany Foster, finally going one on one. Fuck, I misspelled Foster. <laughs> I did it again. Or I got a lot of time to do it anyway. There we go. Took it slow and steady. Got it finally. Uh, how do you bet? So if you if you uh, type an exclamation point bet, then the then a uh, number either zero or one depending on which person you want to bet on, uh, and then the amount you want to bet. Uh, just follow the same formula that these guys do and do in just a second. No, it's all got to be in one message also, and also, uh, the betting's got to be active.
All right, let's get this shit going. Yanny, you got it backwards. It's number then chips. Nice try. Melissa Rude making her way down to the ring. Thank you for explaining it there. Uh, <laughs> Melissa Rude, she is a former UPWA Women's Champion. She's held the title two times in her career. Uh, initially won it on, on uh, May 23rd. No, initially won it on August 24th, 2019. Held it for 63 days. Uh, at that time, was the longest reign with the title as well. She, she would once again hold it for 55 days, starting on uh, on May 23rd of this year. Yeah, there you go. As long as you got enough chips to back that up, then that bet should be valid. <laughs> And of course, the inaugural and women's champion. Accompanied by Cassidy and from Augusta, Maine, Brittany Foster. During the Wrestling Palace 2 uh, post show, Brittany Foster was told by Conor McCarthy uh, that in exchange for her being split up from Cassidy, Due to uh, the brand split in the women's division, she would get first crack at the winner of the tournament. And in that match, we would decide the United States Women's Champion. We have finally reached that point. Brittany Foster about to face Melissa Rude, the winner of the U.S. Women's Championship Tournament. Brittany Foster, of course, a two-time UP... Well, I think only a one-time. Uh, two-time if you count the... Uh... Oh, no, she actually is a two-time Women's Champion. Uh... She is the inaugural UP Women's Champion, won it at Sandstorm back in 2019 before winning it again on September 17th earlier this year. And of course, there it is. One of these women are about to become the first ever superstar to hold this title, the United States Women's Championship. Two months have led up to this moment, and we are finally going to crown our champ. And, uh, time? What's with the time limit here? Also, I did, I may, I, I admit I may have forgotten to do something here. Alright, let's see here. Uh, so, I don't know what the hell's going on with the time limit. <laughs> We may need to restart this match. Matter of fact, I think we are going to get... Let me go ahead and fix the... Let me go ahead and get this going real quick. Get the points going. Uh, If we restart the match, will the time fix? I've never seen that happen before. It's still at 0-0. Zero, zero. What the fuck? <clears throat> One more time. Third time's the charm. If this if this doesn't work, then uh, we're going to exhibition. And it is still zero zero amazingly. All right, exhibition time. Oh, wrong thing. Exhibition time. We'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and fi uh, set that up real quick. There we go. That's never fucking happened before. <laughs> I've never seen that happen, ever. In universe or in exhibition, I've never seen the clock just go to zero like that. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and exit out of universe real quick. Brittany Foster cannot lose or win, so just give her the title. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, let me go ahead and find Retaliation real quick. There we go. Uh, Alright. 
Give me a title match on immediately. Melissa Rude, wherever the fuck she is. There we go. Uh, her people in her corner are Jessica Taylor. And Selena Dominguez. Uh, so the theme song is Smile Like a Hostage by The Violent. Uh, pretty good song. And then Brittany Foster. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and fix this real quick. Much better. Uh, two managers, and of course she's got Van Diver and uh, Cassidy. Well, at least I ain't gonna have to update it in an exhibition then. There we go. Yeah, it's a pretty good fucking song, ain't it? <laughs> nice and chill. That was fucking quick. Alright, 30 minutes on the clock. Let me go ahead and fix the volume. There we go. Much better. <clears throat> Foster versus Rude now finally happening. Uh, Rude with a spit, uh, swinging neckbreaker in the air there. Nice uh, gourd buster neckbreaker, I, I believe you would call that. These two going back and forth in the middle of the ring to start things off. Oh, catches the kick. Instead, Foster going to send Rude towards the ropes and off the rebound. A quick drop down and follows up with a Samoan drop. Gotta say, it's kind of amazing that uh, Melissa Rude found any friends to back her up in this matchup. Uh, we all know Rude does not have a good history with other people. And now the figure four head scissor applied, trying to force a submission out of Foster, perhaps able to escape, though. Oh, what a knife edge chop across the chest. Launches her into the corner now. Foster rolling to the outside, trying to create a bit of separation. Remember, there are... 29 minutes remaining in this matchup. There's a bionic elbow. And wait. Hang on a second. Oh! Quick stump. And... Oh, what a... That was such a SmackDown versus Raw animation. <laughs> Going for the cover. Only a one. That was just so incredibly, like, mid-2000s that I just watched. <laughs> It, it's it's really weird when you find animations like that. That's fucking... <laughs> it's insane that they're just still in the game after all these damn years. Uh, Backbreaker, neckbreaker combination from Rude picking Foster back up. And now the, uh, the bow and air... Or the surfboard stretch, rather, applied. Driving her knee into the upper back for extra leverage and damage. Continuing to pull back against the shoulders, going to let go of the hold... And another bionic elbow for Foster's troubles. Wait, pushing her back now. Trying to create some separation and a headbutt taking her down. Picks her back up to her feet. Just to pull her in and deliver a backbreaker. That did not look like it felt very good for Melissa Rude, but firing back now with that arm drag taking the opponent down and picking her back up as well. 27 and a half minutes remain in this matchup. It's going to be a while, I believe, till we see a single fall. But then again, tonight's been full of fucking surprises. So I wouldn't be... I wouldn't, uh... Hold it... Ag don't hold it against me if somebody scores a fall in, say, the next minute, even. There's the DDT from Foster. And an Iron Claw applied to the shoulder as well. Meanwhile, it looks like somebody outside slipped in a chair. Not sure if that was Van Diver or if that was Cassidy. Either way, Foster... Let's go with the Iron Claw. And now the Painkiller connects. Meanwhile, Jessica Taylor distracting Foster. And I think somebody's distracting the ref on the other side of the ring. 
Hard to tell what's going on over there. Meanwhile, uh, Melissa Rude looking to capitalize here with the Famouser. <clears throat> Setting up now, looking to put Foster away in this contest. Looking for that belly-to-belly -belly slam. Foster able to reverse it, trying to fight back here. Uh, has that double wrist lock applied against her, but able to fight out of it with those punches to the ribs. Looking for an uppercut, Rude with the reversal and now going to send Foster up and over the top rope down to the floor below. <coughs> oh, fuck. Picks the opponent back up. There's a right. And Foster responds with one of her own. Into the corner goes Rude. Or into the uh, inside the ring, rather. Rude taking her down at the shoulder. Slamming her into the mat with that uh, with that arm ringer. And, oh, fights back with that uppercut, though. Looking for another painkiller. That one gets countered. But Foster still in control. And now you see Dominguez playing some mind games here, allowing Rude to deliver the backstabber. Stomps the face. Setting up now. Looking for a spinning soul kick right across the face. And now you see Cassidy distracting the referee, getting a bit of revenge for uh, Brittany Foster in this match. However, maybe short-lived the belly-to-belly -belly slam connect. Going for the cover now to put Foster away. And that is the first fall of the match. Wait a second, the Chemical Kiss DDT going for the cover now. Only a two count. <laughs> Only a two count there. Uh, why, did, why did Taylor just do that? I feel like she was trying to distract the referee or something, then the game kind of bugged, and she just threw <laughs> fucking Dominguez into the I mean, that would be a distraction, to be fair, but it didn't work, I guess. All right, it is currently 1-0 to zero in this matchup. Melissa Rude setting up now. Going after the leg of Foster. And now going for the cover. Lateral press, 1, 2, and only, not even a 2, I don't think. Uh, never realized how spider-ridden my bathroom is. Like, whoops opened the fucking portal from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse in this bitch. Yeah, uh, kill, get rid of that bathroom. You don't need that shit anymore. <laughs> Use the bathroom outside. If if the spider's going to claim it, it is theirs. Taking her back up, a kick to the gut, looking for yet another Famouser, planting her face first into the mats. And now you can see once again, referee currently being distracted by Cassidy. As Rude goes for the cover, looks like the distraction is going to pay dividends. Pulls her in. Looking for some sort of uh, cravat suplex there. Very modified maneuver. Very unique. And Rude now going to the top rope. And looking for the frog splash. Same way that she beat uh, beat Tanaka. Akane Tanaka. This past Tuesday or Thursday night. On Motor City Wrestling. But Rude able. Or uh, Foster able to avoid the impact. And prevent. Oh a couple of slaps there. Prevents Rude from scoring another fall. Wait a second, the chemical kiss DDT connects again. Now the cover, rope break though. And meanwhile, Taylor distracting the referee again. Was not confident in, uh, in Rude's ability to reach the ropes, I guess. Yeah, spiders fucking suck. Brittany Foster laid out on the floor. And now Rude going to the top rope. Referee beginning his count here. Count of three. What a cross body off the top rope from Rude. There's a right from Foster. Back inside now. And setting up now. Looking for a, uh, a gourd buster neck breaker once again. Now Cassidy again getting involved here. Provided the distraction, and Foster going to capitalize with a back suplex. 
They are spiders, though. Uh, they're heading long legs. Even fucking worse. Painkiller connects once again, going for the cover now. To score the first fall for herself in this match, only a two. <laughs> Wait a second, Foster. Going to the top rope once again. Or for the first time in this match, I believe. Uh... Almost nine minutes in here. Foster's got to get that fall back soon. And off the top rope, looking for the clothesline, didn't get any of it. Able to sidestep was uh, Melissa Rude, but now going to send Rude into the corner. Misses that hip attack. Rude, with a reversal, delivers another famous Rude. And now back to the middle of the ring. And Stump right to the elbow, going for the cover to put Foster away one, two, only a two there. Melissa Rude setting up now though, she wants to score this second fall and further her lead in this match and she is going to hit that belly to belly. Looking for the pin, shoulders are down, one, two, and Foster able to kick out this time. Melissa Rude not too happy that Foster was able to uh, escape the pin attempt. But despite this continuing to go after the legs here, she's going to have to keep on going. There's a nice leg sweep there from Foster. And Rude with the reversal. Oh, what a right. Just rocked the opponent. Back elbow though from Foster. Gets caught in a knee strike to the ribs. And a drop kick taking the opponent down. Wait a second. Oh! Headlock driver connects. Uh, you know, I feel like on XW or MCW, we, uh, we deserve a triple threat Iron Man, and the names uh, need to be red, white, and green for Christmas. Going for the cover, only two counts. Maybe on stomping ground. Maybe we'll do a stomping ground for that. Hang on a second. Rude. Setting up here again, looking for that spinning soul kick right across the face. Put a lot of power behind that one. But Foster right back up with that leg sweep. And another painkiller falls into the cover. Looking for the pin to score her first fall in the match. And still only a two. How is Rude still going? How is Rude uh, not sacrificed a single fall, not surrendered a single fall? in this contest yet. Wait a second, look for that belly to belly once again. STO though, from Foster able to reverse. <clears throat> and Foster is now setting up here. A kick to the gut, and the chemical kiss DDT floats over to the cover. Shoulders are down, one, two, and three. That is Foster's first fall in this matchup. Try saying that 10 times fast. It is now 1-1 one to one in this match with uh, still 18 minutes to go. We are just approaching the 40% mark of this match. <clears throat> Another painkiller. And setting up again, look for that chemical kiss for a second time. Uh, able to reverse though with that leg sweep, follows up with the standing moonsault. And now going to the top rope once again. Looking for the fr uh, frog splash. This time going to get it. Hook of the outside leg to put Foster away. One, two, and only a two. Foster just got that fall. Just got that fall back. She's not giving it up this this quickly. Uh, stopping ground. Uh, Oxley red, Campbell green, Christopher Wolf white, and a triple and an Iron Man triple threat. See, I thought you meant, like, uh, all the Campbell Club. Oh, Belly Belly Slam of her own there. I thought you meant, like, all the members of the Campbell Club facing off in the Triple Threat. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> There's the reversal. And a stomp to the back. Hang on a second. Applying a stump puller. Trying to force a tap out. No, wait. Able to reverse with a schoolboy. And pulls her back in for a Samoan drop. Foster setting up now. Kicks to the gut. 
and a chemical kiss. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. Foster gains control. Well, Drew's not white. Well, yes, he is. <laughs> uh, he's blue. Dabba do dabba die. No, you're right. He is blue. Drew is blue. Cody's green. And uh, Jack is red. Foster a couple of knee strikes to the leg of Melissa Rude. Uh, we are about to reach the halfway point in this match, and Foster is trying to gain a more definitive lead before then. Before we reach halftime, there's the Chemical Kiss DDT for a third time to score her, her third fall, and she's doing exactly that. <clears throat> Oh, what a DDT from Rude. Picks her back up. And a kick to the gut, looking for that Famouser once more. And now the cover. Hooks the outside leg. One. Two. And Foster kicks out. Uh, such a good idea, though. The, th uh, the three singles champions in the EP3 facing off... Uh, in a triple threat match, Iron Man to determine the top dog. Now, that's not a bad idea for Soul Survivor, actually. I'll be honest with that. Painkiller connects. <laughs> like, low-key for Soul Survivor, that actually sounds better than the, uh... Than the standard, uh... European versus World Hardcore Championship match. Looking for the chemical kiss once again, but Rude with the reversal. And the Fujiwara armbar is applied. Trying to submit Foster on this one. Wait a second, some dissension in the ranks on the outside. Me Dominguez this time. Sending Foster inside the or uh, sending Taylor inside the ring. I'm really not sure what to make of what's happening outside the ring. Look for the big boot. And a blatant choke in the corner. Referee, I think, was a little distracted with uh, with Taylor and Dominguez. He didn't see what was going on there. And still not paying attention to the match. There's the belly belly. And what the fuck are these guys doing, dude? Alright, I've never seen I've never seen them do this. I've never seen managers do this shit. Going for the cover. And only a two. Wait a second, a spine buster planting Foster into the mat. Looking for, oh, 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 how the fuck did I get tripped up there on the ropes? That looked like it could have been a huge botch if this was real. Kick to the gut, and another one setting up now looking for a swinging neck breaker. And follows up with a splash. Going to pick, no wait, Foster with the reversal and leg sweep instead. And now Foster may be about to score her fourth fall of the match. Looking for the chemical kiss, DDT gets caught that time into a leg sweep, follows up with a standing move solo. And now setting up here. Backbreaker, neckbreaker combo. Quick stomp going for the cover now. To put Foster away. And now, not only going, there only going to be a two count there. Foster with the reversal, Hurricane Rana taking the opponent down. Still 12 minutes remaining in this match. There's the uppercut, and a kick to the gut, and a Famouser once more. Will that finally? do it for Foster. She's not going for the cover though. That may be a mistake but instead she's going to take a chance on going for the frog splash immediately and that is going to cost her big time. 
Foster getting those knees up, able to avoid the impact, and now another chemical kiss. Drags her back towards the center of the ring, maybe about to see a fourth fall. And now Taylor provides the distraction. And hold on a second, Taylor has just been ejected from the match. We are, this is essentially a two on three now for uh, Melissa Rude, since she only has Dominguez in her corner now. Jessica Taylor's uh, bet her rules too much in this match, threw, threw Dominguez inside the ring too many times. Uh, and just like that, she's been ejected. And now, not only does, does Melissa Rude have the uphill battle of having, having to regain two falls, but now she also has lost Jessica Taylor. And to the outside, she goes trying to regain her composure, trying to formulate a strategy, perhaps. Oh, what a... a rocking her back with those forms, dropping her down to her knees, and finishing her off in that stump. Uh, if you mix Melissa and Brittany's last names, you get the worst fear of orphans in the world. Rude Foster. <laughs> These two going back and forth looking for the kick. Instead, Foster with one of her own, both back inside. And Rude launched into the corner. Oh, looking for the painkiller. Gets blocked with a knee to the gut instead. And now the spine buster once more. Melissa Rude going to drag. Foster over towards the over towards the center of the ring here. And setting up again. I honestly don't know if this is her finisher or signature or or just regular move. But either way, hits another spinning soul kick. And dropping the elbow across the leg. Foster, or uh, Rude rather, to the top rope now. <clears throat> Looking for a frog splash this time gets it all. <clears throat> Looking for the cover. One, two, three. Melissa Rude finally working, uh, working towards evening things up by scoring that fall off the frog splash. But it is still two to three. It's still an uphill battle for Rude. But it may not be for too much longer. Another spinning soul kick. Going for the cover. One. Two. And only a two. Good job on the Damian Deaver card from MCW. Uh, that actually is your first one despite having like six of them before you did that trade for Wrestling Palace. To the top rope once again. Brittany Foster the boat. Oh, another frog splash. And now, going for the cover. One, two, three, no, no, only a two. That right there may have just altered the course of this match. I I think Foster nearly got pinned there, and if she did, I feel like Rude would, might have just been on, uh, might have just been on, uh, on route to winning this match. But Foster right there at about 8 minutes 30 seconds. Being able to kick out there, not letting the score get tied, that might have just changed things. We may see a tie further down the road, but that one fall may have just been the difference maker. Rude is Eddie Guerreroing the shit with them frog splash. Yeah, I don't know why the fuck she has that. I think I'm going to change that to a basic ass frog splash of anything. Going for the cover off that reverse slingshot, only a two count. Couple of boosts to the side of the head. And a quick stomp to the knee. Picking Rude back up, and there's the reversal, though. And, uh, Yanny, I hate to break it to you, but we have just surpassed the 1 hour 45 minute mark. Uh, therefore, your prediction is wrong. Rude rolls to the outside. And Foster just going to let her get back in. Not sure if that was the right play. Ooh, a headbutt! Follows up with that painkiller headbutt. So much more force behind it. Going for the cover now. To score a fourth fall. And she's going to do exactly that.
And wait a second. Looking for the chemical kiss. Gets countered though. And oh, what a backbreaker. I feel like. <laughs> and rolls to the outside as well. I feel like uh, Doug's brain's dying there for a moment. Uh. Better just made Botchmania in between the I am the table and you talk too much segments. Uh, and it was one hell of a wombo combo as well. The double head buzz there, uh, the old one two, if you will. Rude with a forearm and a kit. No, gets caught. Single leg takedown into a clover leaf. Driving her knee into the back for extra damage here, trying to force a submission and gain her fifth fall. And no, going to relinquish the hold. And out to the outside, joining Dominguez. Not sure if that was the smartest strategy. Maybe a bit of trash talk there. Uh, but Rude now getting the opportunity to recover. Still five and a half minutes left. Rude is down by two. But at the moment, we are on the we are uh, on track for Brittany Foster to not only have been the inaugural UPW Women's Champion, but also become the inaugural United States Women's Champion. Just over a year later. Oh! What a bionic elbow setting up there. Gets caught, though. There's the clothesline shutting down that attempted offense. No matter how much this goes, uh, it's going to be a more balanced iron person match than Oxley versus Alex Rude. Or fucking, uh, well, I think it was Cody Jack Campbell versus Riley Anderson, actually, was the most one-sided Iron Man I've ever witnessed. There's the Chemical Kiss DDT looking for another cover in this match. One, two, three. That is another fall, and I think at this point it's unwinnable for Melissa Rude. Kick to the gut. Famouser, though, trying to come back. And only a two count. Four minutes remain <laughs> in before three rollups. Uh, four minutes remain in this matchup, just over four minutes. Wait a second, looking for another Famouser. Face first into the match she goes, dragging her to the middle of the ring now. And looking for the cover. One, two, only a two though. She needs to get three falls just to tie and go into overtime. She's just knocked down the ref now. That is not good. Because even if she hits this frog splash, she's got to wait for the ref to get back up. And Foster getting the knees up once again. Able to avoid the impact, but F Rude fighting back still. Kick to the gut. And now looking for another reverse slingshot back into the ring. There's a jawbreaker. And the chemical kiss DDT. Hooks the leg. One, two, and three. Another another fall. It's it's you know it's really weird to see Melissa Rude on the receiving end of a burial. But I think at this point our match is set. It was looking good for Rude early on in the matchup, scoring that first fall, and then it would take uh, it would take 12 minutes in total for Foster to score her first fall of the match. Uh, but in the end, with two and a half minutes remaining, she's going for another cover, trying to get at least one more fall. Still trying to come back in this match, but I don't think it's going to happen. Melissa Rude losing with no chance to tie. You love to see it. <laughs> Rude and Foster still going at it, but I just don't think it's going to happen for, uh, for Rude to the top rope. She has to score one fall every 30 seconds and with a setback like that. It's just not happening. It's just not happening. Also, thanks, Jordan, for the 100 bits, dude. Uh, Spinebuster again. Yeah, at this point, I think it is a safe bet to say that Brittany Foster is not only your inaugural UPWA Women's Champion, but also the inaugural United States Women's Champion. 
the first superstar to hold either title and the first superstar to have held both titles. And still, Foster still on the offensive, 90 seconds remain. It would end around two hours. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Well, we can also ex we can all always just go ahead and extend things. Uh, just stick around for another 15 minutes for no reason at all. <laughs> Has the torch rack locked in? A modified torch rack at that. Might as well call it Mercy. Uh, I mean, I would, but then like, I would just call these matches early, but then you don't get to see the the victory animations. <clears throat> and another chemical kiss. <coughs> oh, fuck. Well, rope breaks in for that time. Maybe there's hope yet for Melissa Rude. 35 seconds remaining, just needs four more falls to tie. That is one fall every seven seconds now. And wait a second, this move is going to take seven seconds to do, plus another three to, to go for the cover. Spinning soul kick. And she don't even want the pin. Melissa Reed don't even want the pin. She just wants to hurt Foster a bit more. Wait a second. Wait a second. She's going. She's going to the top rope. Will she hit it in time? Come on. Frog splash to Brittany Foster. Got the last laugh. But Foster, speaking of laughs, Foster, regardless, wins the match. With a score of two to six, Brittany Foster is your first ever United States Women's Champion. Uh, yeah, stay around for another 15 minutes and get Marty off, uh, an off the air match against I don't know DGX and Iron Man submission match. So an ultimate submission match. <laughs> Come on, let's see it. Let's see that animation. Here is your winner and new United States Women's Champion, Brittany Foster. Brittany Foster, your first ever U.S. Women's Champion. Now you can definitely say she didn't earn it by essentially getting a bye to all the way to the end of the tournament and as Melissa Rue just watches on in spite. Brittany Foster walking up that ramp alone because she did it alone. Your United States Women's Champion right there. Gonna go ahead and switch the screen over to uh, the official tournament's board here. Uh, there we go. Melissa Rude, 3-0 in the tournament until tonight. Uh, defeated both Jessica Taylor and Mandy in Group B. Went on to defeat Group A's Akane Tanaka for this shot. And Brittany Foster would just shit on all of that. By getting that by, advancing to the end of the tournament. And just like that, she is your women's champion. Uh, so yeah. That is that, people. Uh, this match was four and a half stars. There's too much women, women chuckling. Uh, anyway, that's that's enough, though. Not our best pay-per-view. I will be honest with you. Uh, but Proving Ground next month. Proving Ground next month, though. That should be pretty fucking good. Proving Ground 2021. Make sure to tune in in four weeks for that. I don't know if we have an official date. Uh, if I've marked it in the calendar, I can go ahead and figure out exactly when that's going to be right now, though. The 1926. Uh, all right. One, two, three, four. That'll be January 16th that we come back to pay-per-view for Proving Ground. But until then, be sure to tune in to XCW on, on Tuesday, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, of course. And Thursday, for Motor City Wrestling, catch up on all the fallout fall following retaliation. <clears throat> uh, also at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But till then, this was Retaliation, live from Boston, Massachusetts. And this was your boy, Doug Dark 6. I'm now officially signing off. I will see you guys on Tuesday for XWC. See you guys later, dudes.